Hi again, everybody, and welcome to another chapter of Muskogee Ruffer Football here on TV 15. Bill Huddleston, along with the coach of the victorious Muskogee Ruffers, 4-0 coach, game plan accomplished with another big win. Yeah, most importantly, 1-0 with plus 15 on the, you know, on the positive side. Uh, went up to Ponca City, much improved football team. You know, something that really had us concerned. I mean, they'd only been giving up nine points a game and was lucky to come out of there with 47. Uh, had a couple of defensive touchdowns and, and you know, we, we played pretty well other than our just, you know, we had a couple of turnovers ourselves. Uh, that one that killed the first drive, one that came late that didn't really matter in anything, and uh, but still a few too many penalties, and uh, we get that all cleaned up. I think we got a chance to be a pretty decent football team. Well, it was a great night for the Ruffers when it all said and done. Forty-seven to six was the final score. It was six-six early on, <laughs> but then all of a sudden the defense just explodes and. Like you said, throughout the night, uh, created a couple of defensive scores, added along with multiple turnovers. And when you get to that, like the situation now, plus 15 in the turnover ratio rate, uh, that sells for pretty good success. Yeah, in four games, you know, we're averaging five turnovers a game, and we've given up five in, in four games. So we're at plus 15. You should be winning ball games if you do that. If not, something's wrong drastically with your offense or special teams or defense somewhere in there. But very proud of the way that they're they're getting in. Offensive line the other night, I've got to brag on also because we talked about last week of we see a 3-4 or a 4-3 every week, and you just don't see that odd stack defense anymore. And, and they run it well. You know, I was talking with Coach Harmon before the game, and they do a great job with it. And we were we were concerned with some of the things that we knew they would do to us. And uh, hats off to my offensive staff. You know, Coach Graham and those guys did a great job of we didn't hit so much inside. Now then they wanted to pinch everything inside. So we did a little G uh, sweep outside, and uh, our lineman was pulling out. You know, D Lucky and Day Day just did a great <laughs> job of blocking our guys on the perimeter. Our receivers blocked well. and. Uh, you know, occasionally out there, you're going to get a holding call in, in open space with a receiver because I, I think a lot of these officials are not used to seeing receivers in high school, especially blocking on the perimeter, and they don't watch the entire play. You get locked on. You've got the right to lock onto somebody and keep driving them out of bounds. And we got a couple of penalties on that, but I'll take those. Those are aggressive. You know, I'm not. I'm not going to try to pull the reins back on those guys. Penalties. There's an effort. They happen. That's a judgment call, and and I I do not want to pull the reins back on a receiver that's wanting to block, or as I like to call them, skinny linemen out there. <laughs> and so they, as long as they continue to keep blocking hard, we're going to have some good plays. But the defense, as you said, stepped up. They got their shutout. You know, the one lone score come on the. Um, on the kickoff return after we had scored. Uh, and, you know, that kid did a good job. We didn't do so well. We He fumbles it down there around on the five, and you see that so much done. I saw it this weekend on some uh, college games. It always seems like when the ball drops, if you're not disciplined and people start getting out of their lane because they're thinking fumble now, all of a sudden if they ever do regain and they get outside, now everybody's come to the inside on the fumble and he, he hit the sideline and he was gone. And so just not very good execution on our part, but we'll get it corrected. Coach Dvorak and his guys do a great job with special teams and they'll get that corrected. And I think they did during the course of the game and, and did a pretty decent job. But main thing is we come out of that with a victory. Uh, and, and we're plus 15. And came out healthy. And came out healthy, yes. And we're getting healthier. You know, we're we're pretty back, uh, close to getting Maurice back. And we get him. He just gives us so much more. As a, he's not just a backup running back, but he can also play a slot. He can also play two different positions on defense. And he might be ready for this week. Uh, don't know, you know, but more than likely he will for sure be back by the time we play Sepulpa. 47-6 to six was the final score, and there were plenty of highlights to share. So let's roll our video, and Coach, I'll just let you take it on. Uh, here's one of their first turnovers. You know, Davion Williams gets it. He has three fumble recoveries on the night. We'll get to see his last one here in a little bit that goes for 89 yards. Jimmy, again, just, you know, keeps on it. And, yes, the offensive line was blocking great there, but he just keeps breaking. If you watch Ty up here, watch this recovery, how fast he is, how fast he gets in front. I mean, it's just amazing how fast he is, and he shields this number three. Now, without blocking, he just gets in the way. He gets shoved in the back, but uh, he's able to block for Jimmy there at the end. Ty again. Does a good job. I believe this. Yeah, they're just, you know, big low with a, a sack and another fumble recovery, and I think that's big boy again getting it. Defense, again, just flying around. Here's where let's I don't even remember that's Jay Reed Hagerman got up and just good effort on both sides of football. 
It was, and you know, again, we, if you, as you notice, we're having to go outside a little bit. Here's uh, Connor Ashley scoop and score for a touchdown. Dave Wendell punched the ball right he off the quarterback's hands. Ty with another end. That's his team leading fourth interception in four games. And then a pass play right here to Jordan. It just seemed like everybody was right on their target. This one got flagged for some reason, but nevertheless, great double coverage, great read the ball in the air, and then that's a good play. Isaiah you know, able to bring it back up the field. Here's where I was really proud of our guys, too. They get down here, do the interference call, and they're down here on the goal line, and defensively, uh, they can't get in from the one, and so that's pretty impressive. Here's another one of Jimmy's. I th he doesn't go the distance here, but he that's just a great effort, spinning and, you know. I thought he was going to go there, Coach. They had a lot of kids. You know, the thing that Ponca City had this year that they haven't had a lot of, they had a lot more team speed than they've had in the here past. Here goes our big boy. Yeah, after he gets past this, if he don't run out of air, I think he's going to make it. But look at the convoy here that starts trying to just shield this number four because there's no doubt four can catch him if he wants to. But Jay Reed takes it for the team and just gets in front of him, lets him run over him, and and he collapses. <laughs> but it was a great, great job by him, and I was really proud for him. Like I said, he's tied for third in touchdowns with two or three other guys with two touchdowns on the on the uh, year. Right there at the last two, T.K. Thompson getting that interception. And it's then, good for a young one the, to get in. The there. always favorite play to call, the victory formation, yeah. take a couple of knees. And, Hopefully and we have a lot more of those victory formations. That's my favorite play in football. Absolutely. 4-0 start for the Ruffers, but most importantly, 1-0 with the 15 points. We come back, we'll talk specifically about this week's encounter. Finally back at home again, Ray, for the second time against Sand Springs. And I know there's a lot of rougher fans, and I know the coach and the players recalled the last time Sand Springs came to Muskogee. It was not the most pleasant memory, but it's certainly something that the Ruffers can uh, build upon in their game preparation for this week's game against the Sandites. We'll talk specifically about that when we return on TB15. The excitement in the air. Guys, I tell you, uh, went to the ball game uh, last Friday night. Uh, the homecoming was just really phenomenal. I was really impressed with the student section. I was impressed with the band. And, you know, the icing on the cake, as I say, is, is the big win that we got. But I will tell you, let's keep that going. It's really uh, been fun to be a part of what we're doing here in the community, uh, but more so what we're doing right here in the classrooms every single day. Every day, is a great day to be a refer. Thank you and have a great week. Bill Huddleston, Rafe Watkins. Coach, a couple of seasons ago, the Ruffers were rolling along like they are now, undefeated. Sand Springs comes in here, you end up going to overtime, you've got the advantage, there's a bust on the play, and lo and behold, somehow, the Sandites found a way to make the ESPN play of the game and spoil an undefeated season. Is that something that still sticks in your crawl? Oh, you know, not really, because was able to come back and win district that year and made the semifinals, and that lost a lot. And in the semis, probably bothers me a whole lot more than sure. that. You know, it was just the way it was done. We bat the ball down, and it was it was actually to go to overtime. They would have right. if they make it, it goes to overtime. Instead, they end up getting two out of it because they go for two. We bat the ball down, um, and or uh, if you remember, Bruiser knocks it down. It goes right back to the quarterback. Now he's scrambling around. It seemed like the play is one of those like the long yard it seems like it was going in slow motion for 10 minutes but it goes around and comes back we end up ultimately knocking the kid into the end zone and they end up beating us by one it gets ESPN's play of the night <laughs> but you know uh, we had bigger you know the thing I remember the most about that night at their end we were I, I didn't see any of that I kept getting texts from buddies and saying that that was number one on the highlight I didn't care because that was the night that we thought Big Mike you know had to go to the hospital it was afraid that he had uh, a head injury right and I was more worried about losing our defensive end than I was losing that game. And so we were able to come back again and win district. I've been more happy with the last two years when we went up there and we beat them the last two years. You know, went up there and beat them with Peyton Scott, the top back in the league, two years ago. And then last year was able to go up there. Uh, and, you know, the, the only damper on that night was that was the night that Coach had found out that he had pancreatic cancer right. and told us about it. 
Good news on that front, though, is that he has been cleared, and so Coach Kennard is clear of cancer. And you know, everybody that knows pancreatic cancer, you don't beat that too often. But if anybody's going to do it, that tough rascal did it, and so glad for him. And it's good Absolutely. to see him healthy again on the sidelines. And uh, you know, the thing I always say about Sand Springs is it's going to be the most physical game of the year. I, I revert it back to they have a great wrestling program, and those kids are just tough. They're not always the most talented. But they are the toughest kids, and not, not taking anything away from the Booker T's and the Sepulpas and the Bixby's. They, but these are the toughest kids that we face year in and year out. They will hit you every single one of them. You know it's going to be a physical game. Whether you win it or lose it, you're going to be beat up at the end of the game. And so it's going to be a physical game here Friday night with Sand Springs. Well, no doubt the Ruffers will have to bring the three E's, energy, effort, and have that edge. And I think playing in front of the home crowd with an undefeated season, I mean, there's plenty of reason for the rougher fans to turn out to give you that extra advantage. Oh, I think that we'll even have a bigger crowd than homecoming because our side should be full. And, you know, with Putnam City West, they didn't bring many. Sand Springs will bring, bring a ton of people. So it should be an exciting time at the Indian Bowl Friday night. Uh, should be a great ball game. And hopefully we just come out, we stay healthy, and we get the W. Sand Springs scouting report. What have you seen on what they do offense, defense? And you know, they're going to throw the ball a little bit more. They always have that stud tailback. They've got a good tailback. They've got a couple of different ones. They've got a move in quarterback, but I've seen that their kid that they used to have there, the Pennington kid, threw for a couple of other night. They got Snodgrass kid, who I think is their best football player, number three. Big, tall kid, physical on both sides of the ball. Uh, just a really good football player. Uh, they had the move in from Union, who was from Barry Hill, and uh, all his moves and stuff in there, but he's playing quarterback for them right now. And so uh, they're a good, solid football team. And like always, they fly to the ball on defense and will do a great job. Offensive line wise, they're the same. They will block you into the bleachers and, and just get after you. And again, a hard nosed team. So, uh, you know, we, we, hope to do what we've been doing is shutting down the run and forcing them to throw. If, if they beat us, we want them to beat us throwing it. What do you feel like has been the true key for, we've talked about the defensive success and the plus turnover ratio, but this offensive unit this season is averaging 47 points a ball game, right? That's, that's big numbers. I don't care who you play. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of it is the defense has put us in good position. The other is that our offensive line is so much better than it's been. You know, again, as I told you the first year, we thought it would be the best offensive line since the semifinal year, and they're holding true. They're not the biggest, and they're not the strongest, uh, but I tell you, they, they work together well as a unit, and everybody that knows offensive line, that is the key. Uh, they work well as a unit. They know their responsibilities. They're strong enough. They're fast enough to do the little things, and, you know, we've always asked if they'll occupy somebody with Jimmy and even Isaiah when he comes in and then with Ty, we got three guys there that you don't have to give them a whole lot for them to make something out of it. So if they'll just occupy their man for a split second, most of the time those three guys can go around at me in the secondary. So I think that's a lot to do with it too is our offensive line. And we are blessed to have some skilled kids that can run as well. Absolutely. Ty, Jimmy, and like you said, Isaiah. I really like that package though when you go jumbo or I think you call it cowboy or something like mm -hmm. that. When you bring Caleb in and then you also put big Caleb Bigelow back there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a hefty package to try it to is defend, big. whether you go left, right, or right up the middle. Well, and you get some play actions off of it out in the flats because you know Bigelow or uh, Webb, either one, can have great hands. And so uh, it, it's, a, it's a good package for us. You know, Coach is, and them has done a great job on the offensive side of the ball. Coach Graham, Coach Staley, Coach Dvorak, Coach Callens, uh, Coach Julian, and Coach McMillan. We got six of them over there, and they're doing a great job. And I, I couldn't ask for any more out of our offense right now. Well, certainly it'll be a big opportunity for us to pick up that fifth win on the season, continue their improvement play by play as they count down toward the playoffs. 1-0 and start, got the plus 15. Let's go make it two straight in district play. That's that's the key. That's what we've got to do is just keep winning one, being 1-0 one and each week. Take the next game and make sure you get that win. It'll be Friday night at Indian Bowl. Kickoff is set as normal, 7 p.m. We'll have our live coverage both online at rougherfootball.com beginning at 6.30 as well as with the radio broadcast on Hometown 1017 KTFX. Rafe? So far, so good. Let's just keep getting better. And, that's, and I think it's a little rougher night, too. I it believe. is a little so rougher we night. See, I make sure to see all the guys out there with their rougher green on, and those, they know that to come down on the field and pre-practice and come down and watch and do whatever they want to until the kickoff. And so we hope to have the field full of little roughers. Little roughers, big roughers, young roughers, old roughers. Wear your green, be at the stadium Friday night, and show your support for Muskogee's hometown football heroes, the Muskogee Ruffers. Trying to continue to win every day the Muskogee way. 
today because it's always a great day for, to be a rougher. For Rafe Watkins, I'm Bill Huddleston. So long for now. We'll see you Friday night at Indian Bowl.